Hey friends, welcome to this episode of Healing Talks. I'm Chad Gonzalez. And so thrilled to have you with us tonight and just uh, honor that you would take some time out of your day to spend some time with me. We're going to talk about some wonderful things tonight in regards to our identity, who we are, and how to connect that and uh, manifesting the things of God in our life and in our world. But first of all, I just want to say thank you to all of you that are partners with us. Uh, we couldn't do with it what we do without you. And we've already kicked off 2023 with a bang. We've been seeing lots of wonderful miracles. And I give all, ultimately, we give all credit to God for that. But without our partners, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Uh, you know, when we go to churches, we cover all of our expenses. And that's such a blessing to the pastors and relieving some of that pressure off of them. I know because I was, I'd been there, been on that side of it for 15 years while we were pastoring. And so just something that the Lord laid on my heart when we stepped out and we started traveling full time, just wanted to cover all of our expenses. And so because of our partners, that enables us to do that. And so I just want to say thank you. Uh, we've got some other big projects coming up this year. Our big, big project, our main project is it's time to go after a building. We need a lot more space than what we have right now. Right now we're cramped. And uh, we need more space for, uh, we need a warehouse. Uh, we need a bigger studio. Because what I'm wanting to do is, I want a building not only for offices and warehouse space, but I want to have a state-of-the-art studio, not only for us, but also so we can make that available to other ministers just to come on in. And we could have the whole crew film everything for them and just be a blessing to people. I truly believe in sewing. And uh, it's just a part of who we are. We're givers. And I, that's something I, that the Lord's laid on my heart. I want to be able to make that available to a studio for other people to be able to use other ministers and stuff. So uh, if you'd like to be a partner with us, you can very simply go to chadgonzalez.com and do that. Speaking of our website, I'm really, really excited. Uh, we're in the process of releasing a brand new website. Uh, we've got a team that's been working on a new site. We've got a brand new app coming out that's going to better streamline all the content. Uh, you'll be able to go to that app and access the Healing Academy, access all of our media. Uh, we're going to have a place there for community. It's just going to be really good. I I've already seen uh, the mock-ups of it, and I'm really, really excited about it. And you're going to be excited about it too. Also, just want to let you know, again, those of you that are partners and give to this ministry, because of the growth that we've been experiencing, we're having to, to step things up and go to another platform. Uh, so that's going to be rolling out in a couple of weeks. So I just want to make you aware of that. Uh, things are look different, but we're going to send out an email. We'll send out some stuff, put it on social media to let you know. But just want to go ahead and put that out there. Things are going to be changing for the better. And you won't have to be going to multiple sites to access different things. Everything will be accessible right there within the app and with the website. So we're doing this for you. Uh, we're having to do some things to catch up with the growth and then also get ahead uh, for further growth uh, as that's coming over the next few months in this year. Because we're expecting double in every arena. Uh, some exciting things right there uh, on our doorstep. So really excited about this year. Hey, let's go ahead and get into our message for tonight. Um, this is something I was chewing on over the last uh, week, and we talked about this in our, our mentorship group a couple of days ago, did this on the podcast as well. I just I haven't been able to get away from it. I've been thinking about it every day uh, for the last few days, and um, it's something basic, and yet it, it's, it's odd. It's basic, and yet it's complex. Uh, because it's basic because it's a foundational truth, and yet it's complex because our our mind, our brain, we have a hard time grabbing a hold of it. But it's very simply this, this reality that I am a spirit, this reality that you are a spirit. Now, if you've run in the same circles or circles that touch our circles over the years in, in churchdom, Christendom, we've heard this statement, I am a spirit. I have a soul, and I live in a body. Have you ever heard that statement? I'm a spirit, I have a soul, I live in a body. And, you know, we see in Scripture, uh, you know, the Bible says, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. We see in Thessalonians that we are a spirit. We have a soul, we're a body. We see, a, you know, a three-part being, so to speak. 
But when you begin to look at things, the Bible even says that Hebrews that that us as a spirit being and our soul, it's two separate things, but they're so divinely connected that the only thing that could really separate it is the word of God. Like we see those truths in there. But I want to go back to the very beginning because this is something that we need to grab a hold of and not just know it here, but I mean know it. And not just because we know facts, but we have to understand who we are. This is a very basic foundational piece of knowing who you are. So in the very beginning, if you look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the Bible says, God said, let's make man our image and our likeness, according to our likeness. Let's make him to be like us. Well, the first thing we have to ask, we have to understand is, well, what's God like? Well, Jesus says this in John chapter 4 and verse 24. Jesus says, God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, if God made us to be like him and he's a spirit, that must mean we're a spirit. But we don't want to just go off of one scripture. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 9 says, Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more so should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? So he says, we should submit to the Father of spirits. Who's he talking about? God. God is a spirit. God is the Father of spirits. And if God is our Father, and we are his children, we are, I am his child, then that makes me what? A spirit. You see, you see it in Genesis chapter 1, when God's creating, he made everything, he made everything, to birth something of its own kind. Everything produces after its own seed. An orange tree produces an orange tree. A cow produces a cow. It doesn't produce a donkey. It produces a cow. Well, God is a spirit, and he's our father, and he, he birthed spirit. We are a spirit being. We're a spirit. We're a spirit. So you see in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 that when God formed, fashioned the body of man, fashioned it, formed it from the dirt, says God breathed the breath of life and put his spirit into man, into that body. Essentially, you could say that God put Adam into his body. We see that the body was, was lifeless, no animation, no charisma. No, nothing. It's just lying there dormant until spirit gets into that body. So that shows us a couple of things there. That Number one, that, that the body is to be subservient to spirit, not, not the other way around. See, we understand this on the part of death and that when someone dies, their spirit leaves their body. And when the spirit leaves the body, the body becomes lifeless. But if the body becomes lifeless because the spirit left the body, then take it back to the very beginning. Then that would mean there would be no life in the body until the spirit got into the body. So you see right there that, that the spirit, that man as a spirit is to control this body, that this body is not to tell me what I do what I am, what I have, what I can do, what I can access. I cannot look to physical things. I cannot look to this body to tell me who I am as a spirit. The body was never made to control man, but simply give us the ability to function and operate in this physical world. That's the purpose of this body. But it does not tell me who I am as a spirit. The body is simply this house. It's, it's a house that I live in. You know, when I walk into a, a different house, walk into my house or a friend's house, that building doesn't change me. You know, when I get into a car, that vehicle, it doesn't change me. I change it. No matter what car I get into, no matter what make or model, I'm the one that controls the car. I turn the knobs. I change whether it's going to be cold or hot inside the car. I determine what type of music or what type of teaching is going to be heard in the car. I determine how fast the car goes, how slow it goes. I determine where it goes. Why? Because the car doesn't change me. It's just the vehicle in which I'm using to operate in the world. And it's the very same way this body is for me as a spirit being. So I have to understand that I'm a spirit. 
I was made, fashioned, formed in the image of him who created me, spirit. God's the father of spirits. He's a spirit. I'm a spirit. Now, this is where this begins to go a little bit deeper. So the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you are a brand new creation, a brand new creature in Christ. Old things passed away. Behold, all things became new. Now, when you got born again, when you received Jesus as your Savior, when you said in Jesus' name, amen, did you look down and you changed? You know, if you were skinny before salvation, after salvation, you were still skinny. If you were a little fluffy before salvation, you were still a little fluffy after. If you were tall, short before, you were still tall or short after. This did not change. Why? This is not what was born again. This is not what became a new creation. This is not what became new. What became new? Me. Me as a spirit. I am a spirit. Me, the spirit. I became new. What, what old passed away? The old Chad. The old man. The, the, the Chad that was dominated by the curse that didn't have a choice in the matter. The one that was alive into sin and alive into sickness and disease. That Chad. But that Chad died. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17, I am one spirit, not a body. I am one spirit with the Lord. I mean, this is a truth. It's all throughout Scripture. We just haven't really paid as much attention to it as we need to. We've basically done with this statement, I'm a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. We've done with that statement just like we've done with 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm a brand new creature in Christ. Basically, we've made it a spiritual fact. It's been made into a good t-shirt, a good poster, but it hasn't become a reality to us. How do I know that? Because even those that I, I'm around will say, I'm a spirit, I have a soul, I live in a body, but then they'll make this statement. You need to get the word deep down in your spirit. Well, if I need to get it deep down in my spirit, then that must mean that's not who I am. How can I get something deep down in my spirit and yet I am a spirit? Do you listen to what I'm saying. I know it sounds like I'm mincing words, but again, if I'm saying I need to get something down in my spirit, then that's saying that's something that is a part of me, but it's not me. That's like saying, I am Chad, but I need to get this deep down into Chad as opposed to if I need to get this in my pocket. Or it? No, what's going on with the word of God? And again, I know what people are saying. And, and I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to, 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 to be a little, um, little word villain and just focused in on everything. But I mean, what we say and how we say it is important because you say this long enough and you start to see yourself separate for something, separate of something, instead of seeing yourself as that something. I am a spirit. And when it comes to the word of God, I'm not trying to get it deep down in my spirit. No, what I'm endeavoring to do is renew my mind with the word of God. Nowhere am I told to get it deep down in my spirit like it's, it's a separate part of me. No, I'm told to renew my mind with the word of God. I'm told to change my perspective, change the way I see things with the word, with the word of God. I'm one spirit with the, with the Lord, one spirit with him. Uh, so going back to this thing, I, I'm new. What became new? Me as a spirit. I'm a spirit. I became new and the old one died. Uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago that you died. Well, it wasn't this that died when I got born again. It was the old man, the old spirit man. You see this in Colossians chapter 2 and in verse 20. Let me turn there real quick. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 20 says this. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of this world, why then living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? If you died with Christ, well, what died? Not your body, not your soul. You as a spirit, you died. But then Colossians chapter uh, 3, verse 1 says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. 
Notice, for you died. You died and your new life is hidden with Christ in God. Your new life. Your new life. Again, it's not talking about this. It's me as a spirit. Now, when it comes to healing, this is vitally, vitally important. Why? Because 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says what? Don't, don't just say, well, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. No, there's more to it than that. 1 Peter 2, verse 24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died. We, who having died, me as a spirit, the spirit man died died to sin, that we would live for righteousness. So me being born again, a new creature, new creation in Christ, a new spirit being in Christ, being the righteousness of God in Christ. Who's, who's the righteousness of God in Christ? Not my body, me as a spirit. That's why I can't look to my body. I can't look to my actions to tell me who I am in Christ. Because if you do, you're going to be condemned and you're never going to be good enough. Let me tell you something right here. Let me let me say this. This has really been bothering me. Uh, the other day, I was looking at some statistics about death, and especially in regards to kids and teenagers. You know, the, the I think it's the top two killers right now uh, for for people under twenty is suicide, not drug overdose. Well, I mean, it drug overdose is up there but i mean like not because of something that someone did to them or a sickness or disease it's something they're doing to themselves why because they're looking at this they're looking at the situation out here and allowing these thoughts to come that you're not good enough your situation can never change this you could never do anything about it let me tell you something that is a lie from the devil it's a lie from the pit of hell you have to understand who you are. Parents, we must teach our children who they are in Christ. That you can't look at this. You can't look at this out here. You have to understand you're a spirit. Because when you, once you understand you're a spirit, not only can you walk in the healing power of God, but you can also walk and stand against all the demonic forces that are coming against you on a daily basis. Friend, I'm telling you, if you don't know who you are as a spirit being, one with him, you're going to have a hard time winning in life, especially with all the evil and just the demonic junk that is constantly, constantly coming, just constantly bringing the thoughts and temptations, the ideas and su the suggestions to tell you, you know what, it's never going to change, to tell you, you know what, no one cares, just take your life, get on out of here. See, Satan, in one sense, he don't even care if you go to heaven or not. He just wants you out of here. Why? Because once you're gone from here, you're no longer a threat to him. You can't do anything to him anymore. You can't do anything against this kingdom anymore. If you just get out of here. He's a thief. He's a liar. He's a killer. Friend, I'm telling you, if you or someone you know, well, I'm just going to talk to you. If the thoughts of suicide are coming to your mind, you need to rebuke those right now. Say, no, I cast down those thoughts. I will not think those thoughts. I know who I am. I am a spirit being united with Christ. It doesn't matter what I see, what I feel, what I'm, what I'm experiencing, what I'm going through. I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm one spirit with the Lord. And in his eyes, he sees me as perfect and complete. I'm the righteousness of God. In the same way God is right, I am right. I am holy. I am pure just like he is. But see, you're going to have a hard time grabbing a hold of those things if you don't, first off, foundationally, in a very basic, basic way, see yourself for who you truly are. Spirit. You're a spirit. You're a spirit being. And when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become right. And this is why he says in 1 Peter 2, 24, that we would live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. See, if righteousness is a spiritual thing, then healing for your body is a spiritual thing that affects your physical body. It's spiritual. So why would I be looking to my body to tell me what Jesus gave me? Or you could say it like this. Why would I look to my physical body 
to tell me of a spiritual gift I have. See, and it goes even further than that because healing is a byproduct. It is an outflow of who you are and you are not a body. You are a spirit divinely connected to him. He's the vine. You are the branch. You must see yourself for who you are. You must see yourself for who you are. You are a spirit. We're going to be spending a lot more time with this over the next couple of months because I'm telling you, I know this is this sounds so basic. And, and if you're watching this, I'm sure you've probably heard that statement before. I'm a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. But I'm telling you, there's more to it. Anytime you get to the point you think that you've got it all figured out, anytime you get to the point you think, well, that there's not really much to it than this. No, 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 no. There's always more. And I'm telling you, if we're going to access the things that God has available for us, if we're going to walk in and walk out who we are and whose we are, if we are going to be a part of the, the last great move of God, this, this army, this, this group, this new, this new group, this new breed that, that God is building and, and fashioning and forming and bringing together in these last days, if you and I are going to be a part of that, and not just a part of it and sitting in the stands and watching, but out on the field, out on the court with a ball in our hand and leading, if we're going to be a part of that, we must know who we are. Yeah, and it's going to all start right here, the very, the very basic foundational level of it. I'm a spirit. And I'm telling you, we're going to, we're going to deep dive into this thing, and we're going to go a whole lot further with it than what people have actually thought before. I'm telling you, there's a whole lot more to it. So anyway, we'll leave you right there. We gave you some things to chew on. Maybe you've never heard of this, or maybe you haven't heard it in a long time. I want you to spend some time, go through these scriptures that we gave you. I'll give them to you real quick. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, John 4, 24, Hebrews 12, 9, Genesis 2, 7, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, Colossians 2, 20, Colossians 3, 1 through 3, uh, I didn't give you this one. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. He said to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who were registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. So that's Hebrews 12, 23. And then we gave you 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Again, that's not all of it. That's just kind of a, a good little summary of some of these things here in the New Testament. But take those scriptures, think about them, meditate on them this week. And actually, let's pray this together. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now to open up our eyes, give us wisdom and revelation in this specific area, help us to have a greater understanding, a better understanding of who we are as a spirit being. Open our eyes up to that. Help us to become more sensitive to, to, to spiritual things. Help us to become more sensitive and aware of the spirit realm because we're growing in our understanding and our awareness of us as a spirit. Actually, here's a challenge for you. This may sound strange, but here's a challenge for you this week. Go through this week and be determined that every day you're going to focus on being aware of you as a spirit being, becoming more aware of you as a spirit than the body that you live in. That may sound strange, but think about it. Work on it this week. And, uh, We'll come back next week and see where, we're, see where we're at on things. Well, anyway, God bless you guys. Again, those of you that are partners with Chad Gonzalez Ministries, thank you so, so very much. We love you. We pray for you every night. Me, Lacey, and Jake, we, when we sit down for dinner, I mean, I pray for you in the mornings too, but when we sit down at dinner, I say, Father, I thank you for all of our partners. We speak life to their bodies, their families, their business, their ministries. We pray for you guys every day, and we thank God for you every day. We couldn't do what we do without you. Remember that in Christ we always win. We'll see you next week for another session of Healing Talks. Bye-bye.